The creative world has opened its doors. Innovation is now an alliance of specialists, not just the informed elite. Radical collaboration is key and technology is at the heart of this process, giving rise to viable creators in all geographies. Content is still king, but the landscape is changing. Messages saturate our every day. Through this noise, only the best creative survives. Welcome to the channel. This is the Tomasco Project, where you will learn how to build your brand and grow your influence. If you're new here, my name's Tom, and I'm a marketer with over 15 years experience working alongside some of the biggest brands in the world as a client, but also a consultant. Now it's pretty clear that there is now a greater demand than ever before for fresh ideas, but one at a faster pace. A creative paradigm exists and one that bears a little sign of wearing. This need for new ideas breeds quantity, not quality. And guess what? People are at the heart of it. Planners and creatives churn out more and more output in the quest for that one silver bullet, the one thing that's answering all the brief stringent demands. But many great ideas can be left on the cutting room floor. Creative directors or even clients act as gatekeepers, often screening ideas based on their own personal ideals. And rightfully so, this process needs to exist, but in some capacity. If you don't know how to present ideas that sell, it's likely that your greatest ideas will never see the light of day. So today we're discussing creative closing, how to pitch ideas that sell, five hacks to make sure your next idea doesn't get left behind and you can crush that presentation. The first thing you need to know before you start any presentation is to identify the criteria for success. How are you going to know what a winning idea looks like if you haven't got any clarity around the parameters of success? Typically, this isn't always articulated in briefs, so take time to establish the key metrics that you need to cover. It's going to provide the core framework to build your case on. Speed, price, experience, creativity, knowledge. These are the five common pillars to build your case around. So establish the weighting across each of these pillars to ensure you set yourself up for success. Without it, you will find yourself spending too much time discussing irrelevant points and fail to prove your understanding to the decision makers. Now, the second point to crushing that next presentation is priming yourself for success. Priming is a key psychological principle used by many of today's leading business professionals, and they do it for good reason, to get themselves in the right mindset. Tony Robbins is famous for using priming as a way to start his day and change his mental state to prepare himself for the challenges ahead. He uses breathing techniques to control his thoughts and much like Wim Hof, uses the power of his mind to his advantage. Positive thinking will play a key role in your success and sometimes even the small changes in preparation can have the biggest impact. So number three, the one thing that many people fail to do when they start a pitch is grab attention. Start by getting your audience involved, ask provocative questions, get them to commit to something, whether that's just raising a hand or answering verbally one of the points that you've just made. This is going to break the routine. It's gonna get your audience focused. Now remember, stories, not statistics, create connections with our brains. So humanize the process and resist the temptation just to talk about your experience and decoding the challenge. Instead, present the team that are going to be working on the project, not just those executives there to win the pitch. In many cases, clients are aware that those executives will play no role in the day-to-day -day management of the project. Clients want to build relationships with the people they're going to be working with on a daily basis. So be humble, break down barriers, and build up the characters behind the process. Tell more personal stories, get the room thinking of them as a people, because they are, they're people, and it's not just a business transaction. Now the fourth hack to getting those ideas selected is anchoring. The principle of anchoring is a truly powerful one, and one used by many brands when it comes to influencing our decisions on a daily basis. The fundamentals are based on the fact that no choice is presented neutrally. There is inbuilt bias in the way that everything is presented. So to check anchoring out, we're gonna to head to Starbucks. Here we go, here we go. 
again Trying hard but you wanna be my friend Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to Here we go, here we go again Call my bluff, I'ma be here to the end The power of three has been used by Starbucks for decades and subconsciously really channels our cup size selection Presenting the choice of cup sizes in this way means most visitors refer to defaults, and this means the middle choice. Now this doesn't mean presenting all your ideas in threes, you need to place a value on them too. Anchoring your ideas in such a way that places are hyper expensive or an out of reach choice as an option really increases the value of everything else within that set. Now remember, it still needs to be realistic, but if you anchor your choices around price or accessibility, the chances are you're onto a winner. Now finally, pictures are not always won in the boardroom, but they can be lost. You need to think about how to influence the decision-making process once you've left that building. Now I'm always astonished in a world of innovative thinking, nobody's looking beyond that pitch presentation as a way to influence the decision-making process. Often reporting structures mean C-level executives are going to be consulted afterwards, and that almost certainly means short form. Your presentation deck will not be shown in its entirety, and this means you lose control over its interpretation. So think about summarizing all your key points into a short video, maybe 60 seconds long, and send it back over really polished as additional content. But the likelihood is this is going to be shared around internally and you're going to be remaining top of mind. Remember, this is only going to work if your ideas are worth sharing. So there you have it five hacks to crush your next presentation process. Let me know in the comments below what hacks you're going to use. And for more content like this, consider hitting that subscribe button because I'm going to be making more videos on brand building and creativity every week. So until next time, peace.